microscope sauce. 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 Under the microscope. What motivated the researchers to conduct the study is that more and more Filipinos love to eat street food with sauce. And we were quite intrigued about it. Therefore, we conducted a study about the sauce and we have proven that some sauces are unsafe while some are still safe for consumption. The investigators aim to give information to the public in order for them to decide if they'll buy fish ball with sauce or not. So, in the study, we were able to prove that some sell uh, sauce which have E. coli and fetal coliform above the usual, no, above the, what's that again? Borderline? No, above the limit. What makes this investigation worth investigating? Our study is worth investigating because a lot of us could ven benefit from it. First, the students. Our study will help them learn, understand the components of the sauce that they use to eat. Our study will give them a better and more scientifically tested idea on how safe or edible the sauce they munch is. This will eventually make them aware that will prevent them from catching foodborne diseases caused by street foods. Second, the teachers. Knowing and verifying more about street food sauces content and its implication is valuable to teachers. These may be used by them as concrete jumping board topic for their lesson in understanding good sanitation, intestinal diseases and its causes, bacteria and viruses, and responsible consumption of food. Third, our community. Further study on the edibility of sauces used in street foods will help add to the awareness to the community. Thus, this will lessen the possibility of infections or diseases in the area. It may even make the people more conscious as to what it as to what is to be done or what regulations must be adopted to prevent diseases to thrive in the neighborhood. Fourth, the vendors. This will help the vendors not to lose their livelihoods but to help them be aware of selling unsanitary food and to better help them improve the quality of food that they are selling to the people. Fifth, us, the investigators. The investigators will specially be helped by these studies since all of them are found in eating street foods dipped in a sauce. Whatever is the result, it will surely give them the idea what to do when eating street food in the streets. And lastly, the future investigators. Street foods cover a lot of areas for investigation. The sauce is just one of the many. This research may pave the way for future researchers to check on the street food itself that they eat fish ball, tempura, hot dog, squid ball, and the like, may extend it further to investigating on the edibility of street barbecues, fried chicken, peanuts, and oysters, among others. Thank you. In making the alternative sauce, the researchers made use of a cup of cornstarch, a tablespoon of vinegar, three teaspoons of ketchup, one to two cups of water, two tablespoons of sugar. All these ingredients were mixed together in a bowl. Then it was heated and continuously stirred until the sauce thickens. After the sauce thickens, then the sauce is ready to serve. The DOSD, or the Department of Science and Technology, used the multiple 
to fermentation technique to count or to determine the amount of fecal coliform and Escherichia coli found in this that type of thing. The Department of Science and Technology, or the DOST, use the multiple tube fermentation to determine the amount of fecal coliform and Escherichia coli found in the cell samples. The multiple tube fermentation process is making use of test tubes wherein the samples are placed inside and then tested for the amount of coliform present. This process has the presumptive phase and the completed or confirmed phase. In the presumptive phase, the gathered samples are placed in test tubes, which are tested for gas formations because gas formations is a sign of the presence of coliforms. If the test tube sample is yellow, it means that the sample is positive to coliform. And if the sample is colored blue-green, then the sample is negative from coliform presence. That is the presumptive phase. And in the confirmed phase, those samples that were positive in the presumptive phase or the samples that had yellow coloring are used as cultivating medium where bacteria is cultivated and then the researcher or the investigator counts the amount of bacteria present in that colony of bacteria and it is expressed through the MPN or the most probable number or the mean density of the bacteria. In testing hypothesis one, which states that the more fishable sauce is exposed to the environment, the more it gets contaminated by microorganisms such as salmonella, archaea, viruses, bacteria, and other foreign substances. These are the gathering data. The table shows that the sample gathered from a gone villa in alternative sauce has less count of E. coli and fecal coliform because it, ha it has less selling R while the city proper sample has eight hours of selling and we can see that it has higher number of E. coli and fecal coliform. In, test in testing hypothesis 2, which states that the more germ manifested the material used in making the fishable sauce, the more unclean the fishable sauce is. The table shows that almost all the material used are the same. Um, the, the table shows also for a ton villa, an alternative sauce has a closed cooking environment while the sample from the city proper has an open cooking environment and it resulted to a bigger number of E. coli and fecal coliform content in the sauce. In testing hypothesis 3, which stated that the more Escherichia coliform and fecal coliform present in the fishable sauce, the more diseases such as amoeba, typhoid fever, cholera, and the like, you can obtain from it. The result shows that the sauce samples from Mutan Julia and alternative sauce pass the EPA standard for E. coli present in the potable water and food. While for the city proper, sample shows that if failed and the, and the results of eating it are fever, vomiting, diarrhea, and other type of In testing hypothesis 4, which states that the outward appearance of the sauce does not affect the cleanliness of its component, the table shows that for a ton, uh, alternative sauce and the city proper have the same color, which is orange, and their salt does not, uh, their salt is not the same. While for Vilia, for Vilia, its color is dark brown, and the result shows that it has less number of E. coli and fecal coliform than C. proper. <laughs> for hypothesis one, which states that the more the fishbowl sauce is exposed to the environment, the more it gets contaminated by unsafe microorganisms and foreign substances. Based on the research, the investigators have proven that the first hypothesis is true. For the second hypothesis, 
which states that the more germ infested the materials used in making fishball sauce, the more unclean the fishball sauce is. Based on their observations, the researchers have proven that the second hypothesis is true. For the third hypothesis, which states that the more E. coli and fecal coliform present in the fishbowl sauce, the more diseases you can obtain from it. The researchers have proven that the third hypothesis is correct. For the last hypothesis, which states that the outward appearance of the sauce does not affect the cleanliness of its components. The researchers have proven that the last hypothesis is correct. Therefore, the, the fishbowl sauce being sold in the streets is not suited in our society. It has failed the bacteriology test conducted in the Department of Science and Technology because the consent of E. coliform and E. coli is greater than the maximum standard of safe sauce, making it unsafe.